Hello everybody, I am E. Krishna Rao Patro. Today, we will see one application on single level inheritance. How you can implement single level inheritance in Java with a special application. When I say single level inheritance, there will be always minimum two classes. One is a parent class, another is child class. And whatever the methods and properties are available with a parent, same thing will be also available to the child. So that is the nature of inheritance. So when I say single level inheritance, always you must have a two class. One is parent class, another is child class. So the parent's property will be available to child. Or you can say this one is super class, another is subclass. Okay. Or you can say one is base class, another is derived class. You can give any name. So now here, if A is super, B is sub. If A is base, B is derived. So this is where you can say also. Now, in the class A, you can specify set of methods. You can specify set of methods. Similarly, in class B also you can define set of methods. But in addition to that method, the class B can be getting all the available methods of parent to the child. Of course, which are public as well as protected. The private methods will not come to the child. So now, whenever you want to reuse the resource, always go for inheritance concepts. Inheritance in Java is a mechanism in which one object acquires all the properties and behaviors of the parent object. So, whatever the properties are there with the parent, same thing is also applicable to child. It is an important part of the object oriented concept. The idea behind the inheritance in Java is you can create a new class that are built upon existing classes. So, whatever the classes are there, based on the, the class, you can inherit another class. So, when you inherit from existing class, you can reuse the methods. You can reuse the methods. That means you need not write existing method, you can use it. And fields of the parent class. Moreover, you can add new methods and fields to the current class also. So, in addition to the parent's methods and attributes, you can define your own attributes. You can define your own methods also. So, inheritance represents a easier relationship. Is a relationship, which is also known as a parent-child relationship. So, one is parent, another is child. So, parent's property will be applicable to child. For example, there is a class called employee, as well as there is a class called programmer. There are two classes, employee class as well as programmer class. Employee class is a parent class having attribute name, address and the methods are like get name, get address, get best value. These are the methods. Get name, get address, get best salary. Best salary. So, two attributes are there and three methods are there. Now, these methods and attributes will be applicable to child. So now, here if you find the name, address, of course, base salary also there, base salary, base salary, there are attributes. And there are the methods. Now, this is applicable to my child. Name of the class is employee. Now, if you observe here, the name is one attribute, address is one attribute, base salary is one attribute. The name and salary are, so name and address are string type, where the salary is float type. Now, when my class is constructed, I will be passing the name as well as address to my constructor. So, whatever the name and whatever the address you are passing, I will assign it. And the default base salary is 50,000. This is the default base salary. And the get name is the method which will be giving the name of the employee. So, return the name. Similarly, when you call get address, its duty is to return the address. Similarly, say get base salary, it will return base salary. Because these are all my private data. This private data I can access through public method. Public. Okay. Public. So now, this method I can access anyway. Now, this employee class acting as a parent, acting as a 
So I rent Fermi. Now, whatever the properties are there or methods are there with a the parent that will be applicable or that can be that will be available to the child also. Of course, these attributes are private. This will not be available because private property of the parent cannot be available or not visible to the child. So now, programmer class is there. There is a programmer class. In the programmer class, you are having bonus one attribute. In addition to bonus, there are other methods like get total salary, get total salary. This is another method. So get total salary is one method. In addition to this, this class extends. See, remember in Java, when you write the extends keywords, it says that you have implemented inheritance concept. So from employee, from employee, the programmer is derived. That means deriving it. So whatever the public items are there, that is available to child. So now my programmer having one extra attribute called bonus. This bonus can be used while calculating my salary. So get the base salary. This get base salary is available in my parent. So it is available in my parent. Now the get total salary, when I call this method, this will be calling get base salary of the parent. So in the parent, you are having get base salary. That salary is nothing my, my 50,000. That will come in addition to this, my bonus. My bonus is 2,000. So this is 50,000 plus here 2,000. So my salary become 52,000. So now this is the way you can do it. So that means the get base salary of the parent is available to the child. So now let us implement it. Programmer is my class and this P is uppercase and this programmer is my object. I am creating one object and here I am passing the two param name and address and my bonus and static. Bonus is static. Of course the salary also static. That's why I am passing these two parameter only. The name and address. Automatically the name is assigned and address is assigned by, by calling a method called super method. So when I call super, automatically it goes to the parent class, parent class constructor. So in the parent class constructor, it takes constructor this and this. So the name and address comes here, assigned here. Fine. After that, you are calling the total salary. Get total salary of the child. So this method you are calling and this method return the value. Whatever the values are coming and you are printing. So you are printing first get name, the name of the employee and you are printing the address of the employee as well as you are printing the total salary. The total salary you are calculating here and printing. So now let us implement it through program. Now see how to implement it. Now I am implementing control N. Yes, because here I am implementing single items. So this requires the two class. Control A, control this is employee class. Control B. As well as I am having the programmer class. Control A, control C. Now here I am using which keyword? The extends keyword. The extends keyword says that it is inheritance keyword. Now the programmer method having the main means it is my driver class. So my program should be said as control S, control V dot Java. Programmer dot Java is my name of the file. Why? Because main method is available in that class. So programmer extends employee. Now let us run it first. Run. Before running, let us go to the command prompt, compile it, clear the screen, java c, programmer.java, programmer.java, yes, compile it, now java, programmer, yeah, now it is printing, the name is own day, address this, and the total cell is 52,000. Fine. 
If you totally want to have your own, if you do not want to pass directly, as you may want to pass the name and address, name, comma, address. I want to define my own. In that case, what you will do? If you want to make it static, define string name, comma, address. Name, comma, address. This where you have read it. So, better use scanner class, scanner sc equal to new scanner system dot in my scanner object is ready. Now, here I'll ask the user system dot out dot printer and enter name and address. Now name equal to sc dot next. So it is reading the name part and then it will read the address also. Address equal to sc dot next. And whatever the name and address you are reading, we are passing to this to programmer constructor. It will go here, then it is calling the super constructor. Super means it goes to parent constructor. It comes here, so the name and address comes here. And you are importing import java dot util dot star. Now you can give your own name. It is compiled it. Now it is asking enter your name. Assume name is Krishna. Salary is seventy five thousand. So my name is Krishna, and address is, salary is. 75,000. My total salary, employee salary is as after the bonus, I will be getting 52,000. Of course, you may ask, the bonus also you can read as dynamic. Of course, here in this program, we might fix. If you totally want, you can change the address also, means the bonus also. In that case, you have to pass that bonus as a parameter. Here, if you want to make it bonus, also is a dynamic, then you can pass bonus what a float type. So write float bonus. Here I get bonus. My bonus is what type float type. This bonus you have to read as a parameter. Float bonus. You can make it also dynamic. Here now you have to ask enter the bonus also name address and bonus now we, how how will you read for reading bonus equal to sc dot because it's a float type you say next float if it is string only next if it is integer next int if it is float next float so I, I got the float now this float I'll pass the parameter bonus so now I am passing this as a parameter. This bonus goes dynamically to the system and prints. Now let us execute it. Compile it. Yes. Now Java. Programmer. Compile it. Yes. Now we are asking name, address and bonus. Assume name is Krishna and address is Name and address, assume, and bonus is assume 5000. How much? 5000. Name and address. Yeah. Name is Krishna. Address is Hyderabad. Salary is because here I have given. The bonus is 50,000. Already my salary is 50,000. 50 plus 50, 1 lakh. Java programmer name is Krishna. Address is Hyderabad. And my bonus is 3,000. So the name is Krishna Hyderabad. And now it is 53,000. Because 50 plus 3, 53. Because the best salary is 50,000. And 3000 is bonus. So, this is the way it works. If total you want, you can change your value also, the base salary also.
so everything can be dynamic so this is a, a single level inheritance which follows each relationship so every programmer is a employee single level inheritance single level inheritance and follows each relationship is a okay so that means programmer is a employee programmer is a employee so this is a way you can develop your single level in a test program so please remember first define the parent class so here employee is a parent class and then right programmer is a child class extends employee that means employee is the parent for the programmer so the child programmer is child class programmer is child class and for inheritance purpose the keyword is extends if you do this then you can implement your single level inheritance program i hope it is clear so now this is the programmer's constructor pass the parameter then get salary and here in the programmer please observe here here i am calling super when i say super it says what it goes to parents so it calls parents constructor calls parents constructor so this, this is the way it works now assign the bonus then the method is ready then when i object is ready here i have created my object programmer object is ready then i am calling programmer dot get total salary because while creating the programmer object i am passing the parameter pass the parameter programmer object ready then call the method then we have salary also ready then print the name of the employee print the address of the employee and print the salary of the employee so this is the way you should do i hope it is clear so thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates